welcome to the Hona Cafe. What can I get you? Hi, I'd like a pint of Guinness with a world record, please. Coming right up. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us at the Hornet Cafe. Drop, grab a drink and a comfy chair, because we have a spooky tale to tell. But first, let's talk drinks. So I'm the only one that's drinking, you know, a tea or a coffee today. I already said that. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm drinking a taro flavored flavor. Flavel. <laughs> I'm drinking a taro flavored bubble tea, which taro is a potato. Purple potato. It's a purple potato. <laughs> a potato flew in my room. When you walked in, something, I don't know. <laughs> it's actually really good. It's got like a really sweet flavor to it. I was just surprised and I really like it. Um, it's It comes in a little can with tapioca beads or is that what they're called? Beans tapioca pearls pearls yeah and um i don't like the pearls because i don't like the flavoring or not the flavor i don't like the texture so i kind of dump those out but the bubble tea the milk bubble tea itself tastes really good so give it a try so today we're going to be talking about the guinness book of world records um alan how much do you know about it uh you know a lot more than i think all because i actually didn't know a lot about it yeah i mean i know i know i know a little <clears throat> bit about it but I, don't, I couldn't tell you like world records you know what i mean like what there are yeah. yeah what they are and stuff like that but yeah i didn't really know like how it got started which i am going to talk about but you did which yeah, surprised yeah. me yeah i did you actually knew a lot about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i kind of just wanted to first talk about what a Guinness World Record is and give a little bit of the history of the books and like stuff like that because honestly like I said I personally knew nothing about it you knew a lot but I knew nothing a Guinness World Record <clears throat> is record? yes a Guinness World Record is a pint of Guinness that is a world record for being the most full you know? <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean honestly that that's probably in there <laughs> so <clears throat> so I did want to go over what is a Guinness World Record. Um, in simple terms, a Guinness World Record can literally be anything as long as each record and it must fulfill all of the following criteria. They must be measurable. Can it be measured objectively? And what is the measure of like unit of measurement? So like inches, feet, liters, distance. It has to be measurable. That's you what know? she said. <laughs> um and it has to be breakable can the record be broken <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, um our titles which i took this directly from the website mm -hmm. it says our titles must be open to be challenged so like it can't be the most hair pulled from arnold schwarzenegger's head like you can't be so specific that like you know yeah, yeah. um it's got to be versatile. Like, anyone can yeah, do it. Anybody can do it at any point in time, anywhere. Yeah. So, um, standardizable. Can the record be repeated by someone else? Is it possible to create a set of parameters and conditions that the, all challengers can follow? So, like, for example, it's like, um, how many marshmallows can you fit in your mouth? Like, you can find, you know, they can get, like, the specific, specific ones and, you know. Mine's seven. <laughs> Mine's like three. <laughs> I know those are the big marshmallows too, by yeah. the way, not the little ones. <laughs> yeah, you got a big mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, verifiable. Can the claim be proven? Will there be accurate evidence available to prove it occurred? Um, and it has to be based on one variable. Is the record based on one superlative or measured in one unit of measurement? Basically, like, is there only one objective? Like, yeah. fastest runner, strongest man. Like, you know, it's not like... Um, with the wind blowing at a certain degree, can this do to, you know, like... Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, the best in the world. Has anyone done, else done better? If your record suggestion is new, then the Guinness World Records will set a challenging minimum requirement for you to beat. So. <clears throat> some examples that I found, found online are Lebanese teen identifies all national flags in record-breaking time. So that's something that someone else can go and try and do, and it's, you know... We're all, we all have all the national flags, so it's not like only he has it, you know? Yeah. That's basically, you know, 
Uh, another example is the tallest living woman, which is Rum Rumesha Gil Gilji. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at names and stuff. <laughs> And then finally, the most tattooed person in the world, which belongs to Lucky Diamond Rich. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, like, the most, the farthest, the longest, the, yep. the, you know. I mean, we all pretty much knew that, but just in case you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. So how did the world Guinness Book of World Records start? For one, it started known being known as Guinness Book of World of Records. There wasn't the world part. Um. It actually started out as an idea for a book of facts to so solve arguments in pubs, <laughs> which is actually straight from the world record website. Hmm. Um, it was invented by in the 1950s by Sir Hugh Beaver. Um, Beaver. Beaver. At the time, the man was the director of the Guinness Brewery, which I actually didn't... This sounds really stupid, but I didn't know that <laughs> the Guinness World Record was actually from the beer company. Yeah. Like, I didn't know it was from that. I thought maybe, like, they eventually, like, added the Guinness part to um, kind of, like, advertise the beer company. Yeah. But I thought it was, like, its own separate thing that was la added later on. Yeah. I also thought maybe the guy's last name was Guinness. <laughs> so, that's how dumb I am. <laughs> wow. um, but anyway, so Hugh was at a shooting party, which is basically like a whole bunch of guys group hunting. You know, male bonding time. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. um, when a bunch of friends or acquaintances started to argue about what's the fastest uh, bird. Anyway, so he was at the shooting party, and they started arguing about what the fastest game bird was. Um, they tried to check some kind of, like, reference book, but couldn't find the answer. <laughs> um, Hugh must have got into a lot of arguments at the bars, because this gave him an idea to create the book under the Guinness Beer name. So, like, he must have been arguing with everybody. Yeah. Um, this book would give out facts, like the fastest bird or the strongest man, etc., and that is exactly how the Guinness Book of Records was born. Eventually, obviously, it spread across the world. Probably, like, Guinness spread to different parts of the world. Yeah. So, so did the books. And it was basically born to solve drunken arguments in bars. <laughs> so, I, I don't know why, but I thought that was really interesting. Um, you know, who knew that, um, basically, bar fights would start a company, you yeah. know? yeah. Um, a very famous company at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it, it didn't start the Guinness Beer Company, obviously. Yeah, well, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, it I'm started talking about the, the record company. Yeah, record that's what company. I meant. Yeah. yeah, I just didn't want people to be confused. Like, uh, Guinness came first. Yeah. I just <laughs> meant like the book company. Yeah. So now we're gonna talk about the spookiest world records, um, which pretty cool. Um, this this whole episode comes from an article from the Guinness World Records site and the record and the um, article is from 2018 and I said no <laughs> hopefully no one has outdone these records but foreshadowing <laughs> yeah um, there are six records that we're gonna talk about excuse me burping. you good <laughs> yeah I had a burp oh. <laughs> um, number one number one record we're gonna talk about it's the largest collection of haunted dolls. And this oh, wow. could be subjective. Yeah. I'm going to take a sip of coffee, tea. If it's from a potato, is it tea or coffee? I don't know. Or is it just I think it's, potato water? I think it's because it's from a vegetable, it's a tea. Yeah. Because, like, the, the leaves and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So this, this um, world record in and of itself is definitely worth an episode of itself, like in and of itself. Yeah. Um, and I am eventually going to do an episode on it. I just, you know, didn't have a chance. <laughs> so as of 2018, the title of the world's largest haunted collection of haunted dolls actually belongs to an island. The island that I am referring to is Mexico's Island of the Dolls, or La Isla de los Mercas. 
I butchered it. Right? No idea. Mercas, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I butchered it. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the island of the dolls. It's got all those dolls hanging from the yeah. trees and stuff like that. Yeah, yep. I seen it's a, creepy as hell. I seen, I seen a um, uh, Discovery Channel thing on it, like, years ago. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's creepy, but I think it's pretty it's, cool yeah, at the same time. It is. Pretty much, it's all the dolls that were flowing down river that people were grabbing and hanging from the trees and stuff like that, right? Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, But yeah, <laughs> so I'm just going to refer to it, Island of the Dolls, because I don't want to, like, disrespect anybody. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, So it's a very tiny island. It's one acre, which surprised the heck out of me, because for some reason, I thought it was this massive yeah, that's what I island. Thought. It's one acre, which huh. one acre is really tiny. I don't, I don't even know if a house could necessarily fit comfortably on... Yeah, I don't know. And I, oh, yeah, I guess it could, actually. Anyway, um... So it's a very tiny one acre island south of Mexico City. I looked it up on Google Earth and it's really spooky. I definitely recommend doing that. That was so cool. Because, like, <laughs> when you uh, look it up on Google Earth, there's people that are actually on the island. Yeah. And you can kind of, like, move around the island and see, like, the different dolls and stuff. Oh, wow. And um, if you go in there, there's one room that you can go into and you can actually, like, see the first doll that he collected. The man collected, which we'll talk about. But, um, yeah, it's really spooky. Mm. So, there are thousands of dolls, doll pieces, and doll heads. Um, way too many to count. But I don't even know if Guinness World of Guinness World of Re- World Records actually counted them all. I highly doubt it. Yeah, they're probably that like, many. that's a lot of them. <laughs> they, probably, they probably did, like, a comparison. And they're yeah. like, you know what? Yeah, this guy wins. Like, no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, um, the dolls are hung from trees, bushes, fences, and buildings, and they cover, like, I want to say 80% of the property, probably more than that, but, yeah. um, this collection began sometime in the 1950s by a man named Don Julian Santana Barrera. Uh, he was a hermit who moved into the island at the time. I guess he just didn't want to be near people, yeah. which I don't blame him. Yeah, I don't blame There's him probably either. more to the story, yeah. but I'm going to cover it in the full episode. Oh, okay. Um, at some point in time, he began to claim that he was being haunted by a little girl who died in the canal by the island. Jesus. Um, a three whole decades later, so around the 1920s. Yeah. Which, like I said, I looked at it on Google Earth, and the islands are... There's islands literally, like, right next to it. Like, you could stand on this island and look across and see a bunch of other ones. Hmm. So, which is completely different than what you would expect. Yeah. Because for me, I would, I keep thinking that it's, like, in the middle of nowhere. But it's, you know, you could hop across to the neighbors. (laughs) That would be the creepy, ominous bit if it was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, and then surrounding it are, like, these little canals. Like, little, tiny, like, small boats can get through. So, it's pretty cool. But, so, supposedly this little girl drowned in one of the canals. So, to appease this little girl ghost, he began collecting dolls for her that began to float up from the water. Mm. And he placed them around the island. And that's kind of as far as I want to get into it. Because I really want to do a deep dive in a yeah. different episode. Yeah, that, would, that would be a really good episode. Yeah. Because so. it, it's very interesting. Yeah. And it's honestly really sad. I just, you know, I don't want to, I am kind of skipping over a lot, but I don't want to... Ruin it. Yeah. Yeah. So, (laughs) um, the Island of the Dolls is now a tourist attraction, and locals claim that at night, the dolls come to life, animated by the spirits of the dead, and begin to call, whisper, move their limbs, and turn their heads of their own accord. Huh. Um, spooky as hell, personally. (laughs) Um, I don't know. I said that I would go visiting during the day, but I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of cursed stuff going on there. Probably. But you're allowed to go visit. Yeah. Um, would you go? I would go to check it out, yeah. Just not just at night. Just walk around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would check it out I, I during the day, not, just not at night. I don't know Screw if I'd that. go at night. <laughs> Maybe I would honestly sit next to the, the next island over. Be like, hey, buddy, can I come watch this from <laughs> over there? Yeah. But, <clears throat> I don't know about that either. It's a really? Still, it's a little, at night, it's still too close for comfort for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I don't th- I don't know if they would, like, if the ghost would hop islands. I mean, I don't go know. Go to the next one. I don't know. <laughs> but. I don't see why not. So that's that world record. 
Yeah. Uh, like I said, I want to do a deep dive into that, but that one was terrifying for me, looking at the pictures and stuff. Yeah, I've, like I said, I, I've seen, I've yeah. seen it on the Discovery Channel. It was pretty freaky. Yeah, so definitely check that out if yeah. you want to. Go on to Google Earth and type in it, because it's spooky. So, number two... Uh, Guinness World Record is the highest grossing ghost slash haunting movie. And I want you to guess it. 13 Ghosts. Nope. Oh, oh the number one? Yeah. Um, top, uh, top uh, rate, or top highest grossing movie. Poltergeist. No. Insidious? No. Older or newer? Older. Psycho. Not that old. Like 1990s. Scream? No. I don't know. <laughs> All right. As of 2018, the supernatural classic, The Sixth Sense. Oh, 19, the first, 1999. I forgot about that movie, The Sixth Sense. That was the <laughs> was the highest grossing ghost slash haunted movie. That movie's fucked up. Man. It is in 20 <laughs> as of 2018. So it stars Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment. Ol- Ol- Osment. Osment, I think. I yeah. Don't know. It was the highest grossing horror movie until September 8th 20, 2017 and what do you think it was? Uh, You're not really into mo- horror movies. No, no. I don't I don't really watch them that much. You want me to just say it? Yeah, go ahead because I'm not going to guess it. <laughs> when It Chapter 1 grows oh, higher. It. Yeah, It. I, I think you told me about that. I think I, completely I did too. forgot. <laughs> yeah, so this, at the time The Sixth Sense I can't that's a tongue twister for the me. Sixth Sense? Yeah. Sixth Sense, yeah, was the highest grossing at six uh, or six hundred and seventy three million dollars, oh, wow. but it took it over grossing seven hundred million, hmm. not by a whole lot actually. It's by like twenty seven thousand. So that's I mean you yeah. know it's not that much. Of, it's a lot of money, but it's not that much yeah. of a difference. Um, and I think it's just pretty cool that the Sixth Sense actually held onto that title for so long because. The movie came out in 1999, yeah. and there's been a crap ton of horror movies, you know, in well, between that. I mean, pretty much after the 90s was over, horror movies kind of just went to hell. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. they, they just turned crappy, because then all, all everyone was worried about was like, oh, sex in this scene, and then sex in that scene, as much blood as possible, as much sex as possible. Yeah. Like, it got corny yeah. around the 2000s, because mm-hmm. then nobody was creative anymore. Because, like, I think, I don't know, I don't remember when Scream came out. But I know that that's kind of like a lot of goofy, like, you know, yeah. can't well, I mean, be horror. I mean, Scream is supposed to be... It's a good be, movie, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a horror film, but I don't see it as a horror film. I see, I see it as just like... It's, in, in my opinion, it's literally just a slasher film. That's all it is. Like, yeah. it's just a slasher film. There's no horror elements to it. It's about a serial killer. I mean... He's not like a ghost. He's not a demon. Yeah. Or nothing so you like that. you like, see it as a horror movie as like haunted stuff. Whereas, yeah, like like Jason yeah. for example. He was a demon. Like he mm-hmm. he he kept dying and coming back. That's scary. And then Freddy Krueger. He was a nightmare demon. Mm-hmm. Like he he would kill you in and your And obviously dreams. Mike Myers was some twisted guy. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. He was a guy, but he definitely yeah. went to like ghost or whatever. Yeah, realm. yeah. But yeah, like it's just there's certain there's certain elements that make a horror mm-hmm. film a horror film. Yeah. You know. But, um, yeah, The Sixth Sense uh, held the gr- highest grossing movie for almost 20 years, so that's pretty cool. Wow. Um, and honestly, that. both creators have made really good masterpieces, so it's understand- understandable why both were at the top. Yeah. So, I didn't really explain what each movie is about, because I don't want to do spoilers. So, definitely mm-hmm. go check out The Sixth Sense and It Chapter 1. Mm-hmm. Um but, the Sixth Sense specifically, like the yeah, Sixth Sense, that's, that's, that's a good, it's a really fucked up, but it's a good movie. Yeah, you know. And um, the Sixth Sense was directed by M Night Shyamala. Yeah, M Night Shyamalan. Yeah, yeah, I'm really. It's good. M Night Shyamalan, but Shyamalan. I call it M Night okay. Shyamalan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it was obviously created by Stephen King, and yeah. both of those names are like really well known in horror. So yeah, you know, yeah. um. So yeah, freaking robot chicken with a M Night Shyamalan. What a twist! <laughs> <laughs> I never uh. seen that, but I know what you're talking about. Okay, so number three of the Guinness World Records is the largest Ouija we- we- oh, Ouija board. Ouija board. I call it Ouija, but I don't think that's how you say it. Yeah. Anyway, the Ouija board. Um, on October twenty eighth, 
2016, the largest Ouija board was created by Blair Murphy and the Team Grand Midway USA. It's <clears throat> it was created or built on the roof of the Grand Midway Hotel in Winbur, Pennsylvania, USA, which supposedly really haunted the hotel. Yeah. And it was already haunted before this, so he kind of like opened up the portal <laughs> if there was one, you know. Jesus. If if it if, you know. This dude's white, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I think so anyway. Um in fact, the fact that the haunted the hotel was haunted is what inspired Blair, who is the owner of the hotel and the Ouija board, uh, to create the largest board. Uh, the board is approximately 1,300 square feet. Wow. And it's basically the whole roof of this hotel. Jeez. And I think if you look on Google Earth, you can still see it, but it's really faded. Yeah. And at first I was wondering why they put it on the roof. But that's literally the only space they had. Because, yeah. like I said, I Googled. You wouldn't be able to put it anywhere else. I, I mean, you could probably make it. it. You could probably make it, like, on the ground if you wanted to. Well, they didn't have space. Because if oh, you look okay. at the um, area, it's, like, a lot of houses next to each other. Oh, uh, well, Like, right. hotels. Okay. It's a smaller, you know. Yeah. So, I feel like the roof was probably their... One, it's kind of a cool spot for it. Yeah. But it's also, like, their biggest um, area. Yeah. Um. And I also wondered if any more, like, paranormal activity happened after this. Like, if it, like, re you know, re or whatever. Got yeah. worse. Um, I do want to kind of talk about the Midway Hotel. I don't know if there's, like, a whole, whole lot of paranormal stuff. But I might make it an episode. Gonna research it. Okay. Um, so, sadly, this Ouija board record was overtaken in 2019. Oh? Yeah. Can you guess where the world's largest Ouija board was now? Like, LA. is now? No. No. Oh. Think about it. World's it's largest? on our side of the world. Oh. Or our side of the United States. Florida. Because they do crazy stuff like that. <laughs> Are you good? Yeah, I thought I heard something over there. Could, you know. Dude, it's getting Stop, spooky man. in here. Stop it. No, I felt like something moved. I got spooked. <laughs> anyway... Do you give up? Or yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. Florida. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Which I want to go to Salem so bad. <laughs> I'm sure you Take do. Take me out there. <laughs> anyway, uh, so constructed of 99 individual sheets of plywood and clocking geez. in at approximately 9,000 pounds and measuring at three. Th 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 I can't talk. <laughs> 3,168 square feet. Wow. It's dubbed the Ouija Zilla. It's created, it was created by Rick or Mortis Sherrick. I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing your name wrong. <laughs> um, he's vice president of the Talking Board Historical so Society, a New Jersey based artist, tattoo, tattoo artist. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he's from Jersey. Okay. That's why he did this, because he's crazy. Huh. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just joking. Freaking Jerseyans, man. Yeah. We're Jerseyans, so we can uh, say yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was unveiled on October 12th, 2019, and it was in the heart of the Salem Common, which is basically right next to, um, I think it's right next to the Salem Witch Museum. Of course. And stuff like that. Like, it's a huge field in the direct, like, not directly, but close yeah. to the center of Salem. Um, it's not there anymore, but the both boards actually had, like, planchettes, too. Oh, wow. So, fully functional, man. Well, and, what um, happened to them? They, well, well, the, well the, the one, the one that, the, the biggest one, like, obviously the roof I think they took it down just because it was kind of like a, just a like. Nuisance. Well, that, probably, and plus it's also in, like, um like a park so they probably didn't want to kill the grass and stuff yeah, like that yeah. but um it was also probably just because it was just for for the world record and then they took it back down yeah um uh both boards are pretty awesome and i'm just wondering like what's the next big one like i don't think you should top the salem massachusetts one because <laughs> that's like it's like it's pop plot uh i can't talk it's like it's uh proper space is in salem yeah. Salem should hold that, you yeah. know. So, number four. Um, actually, we might take a quick break. Okay. Yep. 
so we're back and now we're going to talk about number four spooky guinness world record i thought i should jump in and say that these aren't i don't think they're necessarily in order but like the spookiest world record it's kind of like these are just ones that have like either something paranormal something spooky something you know yeah something creepy yeah. to it so this isn't necessarily like the worst record or you know so number four is the world's oldest ghost question mark <laughs> so the oldest ghost isn't what you think it is i thought maybe they were talking about a person or something that yeah. like died a really really long time ago or they just happen to be the oldest like in age yeah but no the oldest ghost is a huge ghostly reptile of serpentine form so kind of like snaky yeah. and it's measuring six to nine meters long which i don't know how long that is but it's pretty know. big I'll look it up. Go ahead and continue. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it resides at Ghost Ranch, which is like perfect like name for it. Um, I think Ghost Ranch is in Arizona. I forgot to look that up. Thirty feet. Thirty feet. So yeah, it's a it's pretty big. It's twenty nine feet, six point three hundred thirty one inches. Yeah, so it's a pretty big. Um, yeah. Pretty big boy. Yeah. Um. And the Ghost Ranch is like a huge. Um, it's twenty one thousand acre retreat. An education center yeah. and I think it's in Arizona might be wrong but anyway hi everybody I just wanted to jump in here real quick and say that the location is actually New Mexico not Arizona so I was wrong please continue um, its name the name of the ghost is Viveron which is the snake demon um, okay. so of course this may not be true but it was Something really cool that was discovered on the property of the Ghost Ranch. Um, in 1947, paleontologist Edwin H. Colbert un unearthed a huge cache of fossil skeletons derived from various uh, prehistoric reptiles. So basically, they found a bunch of dinosaur bo bones. Yeah. And it's possible. Like... Go ahead, sorry. I said that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, so it's possible that this could be a dinosaur ghost. If there is, like, you know, activity. Um, so, they actually have an idea of what they think it might be. And they think it could be a phytosaur. It's P-H-Y-T-O-S-A-U-R. Yeah. It's a phytosaur, which is not how you say it. <laughs> which is basically, it looks like an alligator. Is it a phytosaur? Phytosaur. Phytosaur. Probably not. Um, if speculation is correct, this go this and this is like the ghost of an old dinosaur. This would definitely make it the world's oldest ghost, cause a ghost, cause because <laughs> obviously it's been around for like really long time. Yeah. Um, I didn't look actually to see like why they think that there's a ghost there, like if it had um like what the activity is, but yeah. just to, you know it's true, guys. <laughs> Which is, you know, if, if, if that is, like, a, a dinosaur ghost or whatever, it's really weird that we don't see more of them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, especially when, like, when the quote-unquote meteor hit and killed off all the dinosaurs, quote-unquote. Yeah. Like, that's, like, a very painstaking thing, and that's usually how the ghosts trauma. are formed, yeah. is from trauma. And, like, those things were absolutely terrified of what was going on, and then mm -hmm. they were just burned alive. You know what I mean? You make me it, sad. Yeah. It is, it is sad. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> But, yeah, that's definitely, like, a thing that happens with ghosts is that, yeah. like, trauma is usually what calls it, like, unfinished business type yeah. of thing. So, you know, um, I'm not sure. I feel like I maybe that there was something particular with that, like, fossil site. Maybe. Maybe somebody know. planted them there or put them there for a specific reason. And then when he unearthed it. It's almost like the um, Egyptians, like opening the fucking um, yeah, the sarcophagi. sarcophagi. Yeah. yeah, you're almost like unlocking some kind of curse. Yep. Maybe instead of a curse, it was just like this animal's being came back to life. Yeah. That's kind of sad. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, so number five of the spookiest Guinness World Records is the largest tarot card, which I thought was cool. And this is also kind of a cool little tie back to the world's largest Ouija board. So in September of 2017, Terrence Kaufman and Blair Murphy, who is the owner of the first 
a Ouija board, the one that was on the roof. Yeah. Um, well, he also made the world's largest tarot card. <laughs> if you type in, I think it was the Midway Hotel on into Google and look at images, you'll yeah. see, like, the inside of the hotel. And it's a very, like, different hotel. It's not, like, clean cut or anything like that. It's, you know, huh. it's, it's, you know, it's got, like, a lot of sp spooky stuff, but also, you know, uh, it's yeah. hard to describe. But, um, he also made the world's largest tarot card. The card is 21 feet tall by 16 feet wide. It's huge. Um, they chose to depict the universe card from the Thra tarot card deck, as they felt it was the most beautiful. Hmm. And um, after completing the card, they displayed it by hanging it from the ceiling of the Grand Midway Hotel. So like I That's said, awesome. it's like really, it's a different kind yeah, of hotel, yeah. it's you know? Different. Um, I feel like that this hotel might be haunted because of the things that could either be happening because of things that happened in the hotel or because of Blair doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a joke, but it could <laughs> honestly be either way. Yeah. Like, was the was the hotel haunted before Blair or after Blair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, did he, he built the hotel? No. Oh, ah, okay. No, I if he, he built it, then obviously, you know. No, I think he just, um, let me look that up real quick. Okay, so I just took pause a minute so I could look up who built it. And just from, like, a quick uh, Google search, search, I can't find that. So, <laughs> But I did pull up the website hotel uh, of the hotel. It's Grand Midway Hotel, just in case you want to know. And um, they have a lot of interesting stuff. So, for one thing, you could stay in different types of suites. So, for example, they have... I'm not, like, advertising this. I just find it really interesting. They have a vampire suite, Frankenstein suite, werewolf suite, mummy suite, mermaid suite, and a bunch of others. Oh. Um, but the cool thing that I thought was they actually have a seance parlor. They have the largest tarot card. Um, they still talk about the Ouija board roof. And, you know, it's, it's just really interesting. I guess they have a few other places, too, because they talk about a Shakespeare house. So, um, and then in the Titanic bar, supposedly there was a 1949 unsolved murder. So, I'm definitely going to dig into this, guy, this guy's, but I just kind of wanted to, you know, wow. talk about it. It sounds really interesting. A lot of history. <laughs> yeah. And also, I just have to say that uh, Butch Patrick toured it, and he's kind of cool. I don't know if you know who Butch Patrick is, but he uh, played Eddie Munster in The Munsters. Yeah, the, the old kid. Munsters, not the new one. Yeah, the little I don't even think kid. Eddie was in the new one. I don't know, because he was, it was supposed to be before he was born. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, we're not going to talk about horrible things. Yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the world's largest tarot card. Um, I looked at it. It's really pretty, so you should go look at it, too. Yeah. Um, no... Finally, we're going to talk about um, the last Guinness World Record, and it's number six. It's the most expensive ghost. <laughs> yeah, most. It's, and this happened recently. Wow. As in 2020 recently. Jeez. So you know what kind of chaotic shit happened because yeah. 2020 was a chaotic year yeah. for some people. So in March of 2020... Evie Woodbury sold two vials that were supposed to contain two different ghosts for $1,990. Wow. We're about to go to Dollar Tree, get some vials. Like, yeah, there's some ghosts yeah, in Yeah, there's here, some right? ghosties in this. There's ghosts in this. <laughs> Supposedly, these ghosts... You, huh? That's like, I'm telling you, though, there's ghosts in this jar. Yeah. <laughs> See, look at that little dusties in there. <laughs> Um, supposedly these ghosts were once ghosts that actually haunted her house, and I, somehow she captured them in little vials. Because that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, according to A.V., I think that's how you say it, A-V-I-E, A-V. Mm. So, that's what I'm saying. Um, one of the vials contains the spirit belonging to a man by the name of Les Graham, who supposedly died in her house in the 1920s, and the second spirit belonging to a young girl, was then summoned by A.V.'s partner after using a Ouija board. 
It's like, how dare you do that? You, like, summon this little girl, if it's true. Yeah. You summon this little girl, and then you put her in a vial. And then you're selling and her? And then That's you sell her. <laughs> or child tra- trafficking. Like, yeah, look yeah. at that, like... you know? <laughs> That's kind of rude. I'm joking, but <laughs> it's, it is kind of rude. Like, it is. You're, it is. Messed up. Yeah. The auction, which attracted more than 200,000 page views on trade on a Trade Me website... Um, it was actually won by Safe Smoker NZ, a company which produces electronic cigarette substitutes. Okay, then. Don't know why. Supposedly, the spirits will, were bottled up in holy water as it supposedly dulls the spirits' energy, which sucks because now they're drowned in. Yeah. <laughs> um, explained AV. Um, <laughs> proceeds from the sale of the expensive spirits... Um, supposedly act after an exorcism fee was deducted, went to an animal charity. So I guess it's a bonus, you know, a good bonus. Yeah. She didn't, like, take the money and run with it. It was donated. Yeah. So maybe it was true when she was just trying to get rid of these ghosts. Or maybe she was just trying to think of a creative way to get a donation, a large donation. Yeah. Maybe she works for the charity. Which, I mean, hey, if it works, like... Yeah. You're selling, like, if you're selling something, it's up to the person that's buying it to validate whether they believe it or not. So, yeah. if it was real, it was real. If it was fake, it was fake. But, yeah, so, I mean, at least, whether it's real or fake or, you know, whatever you believe, at least, like, the majority of the money went to a good cause, you know? Yeah. Um, so, that's pretty much it that's some of the spookiest guinness world records um this was a really cool episode for me to like dive into because it wasn't like a story where you have to try and base facts off of a thousand different articles to see which one's right yeah (laughs) um it's more just like here are the facts here you go plus it was interesting to see what people are doing yeah it's better when stuff gets right to the point (laughs) <laughs> yeah, cool, because now at this point it was, what's this person doing? What's this person doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. And some of it was as current as 2020. Yeah, so, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um, I definitely want to cover more of these stories in detail, obviously. Um, if you like this kind of an episode, where we're just laid back, chilling, talking about... Spooky boopy stuff. Spooky boopy stuff, and just random stuff, almost, in general. Yep. Let me know. Down in the comments on YouTube, because you can't on Spotify. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, thank you guys for joining us tonight. It's actually one of our quicker videos, or, yeah. sorry, podcast episodes. And, yeah. uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we will see you in the next one. Catch you later. You won't see us, but we'll see you. As you can see, we can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see ya.